Hi, this is Janos, it's Real World Audio, and I'm following up on folded pipes. And Nigel asked, he had a very good observation, that when you have a folded pipe, because of the fold, the side panels behave very differently uh, than the side panels of a straight pipe. So for the straight pipe, you have the pressure fluctuation going up and down, and it works uniformly to uh, to as as it as it absorbs the energy and transmits it to the air. However, when you have a folded pipe, then the there the air is moving around the fold, so you have a very different dynamics and and energy transfer. And also, there's one more thing that is restricting the the side panel's energy transfer even more than the fold itself is that there's the baffle, that slanted baffle on the inside and that is uh, attached rigidly to the side panels and that strong attachment prevents the motion of those, that, that really fine motion which is just a fraction of a millimeter, like microns, several microns, tiny movements but they are not made possible because of that long and strong fold is there and it doesn't allow the side panels to resonate. So when you build a, a folded pipe and you want to make it like a live cabinet so that the energy is transmitted through the panels as well, your only area that is able to transmit the energy will be your, your front baffle, your rear baffle, and the top. And the sides will be pretty much passive. And um, Nigel also mentioned that uh, there's, because of the pressure fluctuates in, within the fold, uh, you would need, you, you need to make that, that separating uh, baffle on the inside very stiff to prevent it from resonating because you don't want it to resonate. You want the front to resonate. You want the rear to resonate so they transmit the energy to the air. But you don't want that central baffle because if that resonates, that would just interfere with the front and the rear baffles. That would create problems. And actually, yes, that's the case. So you want that central baffle to be as stable as possible and actually that stability is provided by the side walls. So the side walls are holding that center buffer in place and they are restricting it greatly from movement. And you can take extra steps to, to make sure that it's, it's rigid. One of them is to make it from a, a material that is different from the front panels. So you want the front and the rear panels and the top to be something like spruce or pine or maple and a, a thinner material so that it can breathe and transmit energy and you want that slanty part to be, let's say like walnut or, or something like that or oak something much more rigid so it Kintaro come Kintaro 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 is here oh, Kintaro oh, he's heavy he's a big boy so so you want that interior baffle to be something massive like Kintaro and uh, and another part that is at, at least as important as the as the materials choice for the inside baffle is to prevent it from becoming like a whistle so when you have a whistle the whistle has, has that that pointy piece that that that, that creates those resonances and that internal slant will act like, like that lip for the whistle and you want to prevent that lip effect which occurs in the pipe because it, the air bends around it. So when you have the fold, the air just goes around the fold and, and the tip... Oh, oh, he is getting rid of my mic. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Kinter. He, he, he jumbled himself in, in my... Lapper microphones uh, cable. So, so what you want, so what's happening is that as the air makes that 180 degree turns around that inner fold, it makes the tip of the of the fold 
move and whistle. So that's the bit that is the most sensitive for resonances. So you have to treat that part. And treating that part is even more critical than the material's choice for the internal buffer. So I wouldn't worry about the material itself uh, if, if you make it the same material as the, as the outer cabinet material, it will be still fine. What you need to do is just treat the lip. So at the lip, add like a, like a 50 millimeter or maybe 20 millimeter. 20 millimeter is fine as well. Additional piece, just an additional piece of wood and round the edges, round the corners. So it forms like a, so it, let's say like this is your uh, uh, baffle element in the, in the set central baffle. And then, then you add this thing to it. So to make it like, uh, I think I will somehow like share a drawing or something like that uh, to, to illustrate how, how that looks like. So you don't want just that piece of wood, but you want to increase it a little bit to make it uh, uh, like a round, rounder end. So to prevent it from becoming a, a, like a whistle's lip. So it's, it's a round piece, so the air can bend around it in a nice round shape so you give a little bit of a, a chunky uh, part there and it will act uh, both as, as a support so that it will prevent the, the baffle to, to resonate and, and it will also uh, allow a better flow. So you see two cats, not just one. <laughs> and uh, so it will allow be much better airflow on the inside of the cabinet because the air, it can flow around a nice curve uh, much better than just trying to go around the lip because around the lip it will be turbulences and those turbulences will slow down the air motion. And I would say this is even more important than treating the corners, the top corners of your uh, folded pipe. And that's what everyone is talking about. Like make, make the outside curvature like nice and curve by treating the, in, the inner edges and making them curved a little bit uh, to avoid the reflections from there. But, but the problem is, the main problem is the inside, the, the, the board itself where you need to increase the volume a little bit so it's not, not that whistle and not the, the, uh, that's where the wind speeds are the highest because the diameter, the radius where the air has to go around, it's really tiny. And when you have the, your cabinets and, and the edge, like front, rear, there the radius is much bigger. So there the turbulences caused by that will be much lower compared to the turbulences caused in the interior. I, ho I hope this makes sense. If not, then I, I will make a video using some drawings with and props to, to show this. So I hope this was helpful to a point. Another question that we can look around building a folded, pi uh, folded pipe is uh, the, the, the facing of the port. Uh, do we want to face it front, back or upwards? Um, so you can, you can make it face upwards as well and then it will be a lot more trickier to build. And if you just draw it out for yourself, you will figure out why it's much trickier to make the opening towards the top. Because your driver is there as well and it's conflicting uh, with, with the size of the opening. But you can get creative about that. However, when you have, have, it, have the port facing to the top, then you will miss that extra boost that the floor provides for the base. And, um, but in exchange you get the benefit that you can make it the design so that the driver is at one end of the pipe and then you get the fold, folding it downwards and then exit outside. So then your driver loads the entire column and it does, it's not loading at the half of the column. So, so that's, that's a better solution. So, so then you can do it, but then you'll have the problem that uh, the, 
uh, that the default will be closer to your driver and you can't have like like a narrow to a wide because you need the wide to house the basket of the driver however you can do it in a way that the wide part is where your driver is sitting and then it uh, goes on the inside half and when and the upper curve is where the, the pipe tapers and the port will be a really narrow slit at the top of your cabinet and, and essentially uh, that's uh, there that's where the pressure exits but there what I would say is that at the very end I would taper it out but now you see here the designs becomes a, a little bit more complex and then involves some creativity but it's it's doable but uh, will it work for you or not uh, that depends a lot if you have a very solid ceiling then the the base will bounce off from your ceiling and uh, and it can be even better than than the base if it comes from the ports it will feel more natural because you are not getting anything like direct radiating base from the bottom of the pipes uh, coming at you but you are getting something reflected from the ceiling which will be uniform and hitting your head first what i noticed with the with these ports which are at the floor heights with the pipes is that if i sit on the floor and my ear is much closer to floor level then the base perception is a whole lot more visceral than sitting in a in a position in the chair so that might be a good idea and uh, and and i'm extremely tempted to to build my folded pipe that way to to shoot the 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 port up in the air towards the ceiling and to do that i know uh, Nigel, you want to make your uh, plans as soon as possible. So I'm going to make a drawing and, and a crude drawing to give you an idea how to make the uh, the port, the pipe shoot up with with its port towards the ceiling, and uh, and that will have the positive added positive that in a sitting position or a standing position you will have a more pronounced base uh, perception uh, which is um, usually a lot more preferable than having awesome base when you are just sprawled on, 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 the, on the carpet. <laughs> I hope I gave a few ideas and, um, and we'll uh, catch you in the next video. Uh, thank you for your support. Thank you everyone for watching. Bye bye.